end up in those mountains right there near my house. All right, so here I am in Wales, formerly called Coalbed because it was coal mining to begin with. Anyway, so there's a piece of coal right there. Pioneer group put up this little monument here. Some of my relatives were across the valley and the Indians came over and said there was a rock that burned. They said a black rock said heap burn. See it's right there. Heap burn. Right there. That's the way they talk, you know what I mean? So this is the road to go up the canyon west of town. I'm gonna put in here real quick just to show you one other thing. Well, here's the cemetery right here. Yeah, it just turns out, I'm telling you. I'm like bad luck or something. <clears throat> the Jeep that my neighbor bought me, bought me. I would be really nice. <laughs> the, the Jeep my neighbor borrowed me. Uh, we're like working on changing out the computer on my truck. But anyway, anyhow, getting it tested first. But anyway, so I'm driving it up here and um, and I got right up. I was going to pull into the cemetery because I wanted to do a little something on my relatives here for part of the video. Well, just as I got right, just as I started turning in the gravel road here to the cemetery, the Jeep died. I think the fuel pump went out. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe me and vehicles are not working together very well right now. This is a cemetery around here, little towns. It's just native, man. There's no, there ain't no lawn mowing usually going around along, around in here. Anyway, yeah, this right here, this is a relative of mine, Corporal Thomas Woolsey, Mormon Battalion, 1846-47. What the Mormon Battalion was was, uh, back in the days when there was that kind of a sort of a war with Mexico, I guess. Um, they recruited a bunch of, bunch of Mormons to go on a, uh, like 500 men or something to go on a trip, you know, down, down towards, uh, down to El Paso and across, um, Southern Arizona and California as part of a in case they were needed or something, you know, but anyway, so he was in that deal. There's some more family markers, his gravestones over here. The, uh, with the drought and everything, they couldn't even water anything at all, so it's pretty rugged. Oh, here we are, right here. Thomas Woolsey. 1805 to 1897. So right there. I could straighten up the flag a little or something. Ah. With all the wind that blows around here, it's not going to stand up too long. But that's a pretty desolate cemetery, isn't it? It's like, wow. It's like Tombstone, Arizona or something, you know? This is my family. It's where I come from. <laughs> so my game plan was to drive the Jeep here up through the mouth of that canyon a little bit and then park the Jeep and take the mountain bike off. And there's a lot of trails and different junk up there. And I was going to go cruising back on there and then kind of kind of set up my hammock and tarp up there. Just to show a little demo of what you can do off your, even off a mountain bike. This is my Rocky Mountain, my Rocky bike I've had for, I don't know, 10, 12 years or something. It's a nice little bike rig. Put a lot of miles on it, but not recently. I used to ride four or five, six times a week. But uh, I liked it, it's made in Canada. Um, it's Eastern aluminum, the handlebars, the stem, the frame is all, see the frame's all Easton. and all that. I used to, I was an engineer at Easton, so I saw this bike with all the Easton parts on it, and I'm like, well, I'm getting it, man. It's an Easton bike, practically. Even the seat tube right here is Easton. Seat riser, whatever. So anyway, just waiting for John now. 
Now we're heading to the mouth of this canyon. It's a conglomerate rock, so it's like it's like river rock cemented together in natural cement. Alright, so for what I'm doing here, I've got food and stuff in here. You know, I'm good to go for I'm good to go for a day or so, just real quick. This is a multi-purpose gear bag here, but you could use a compressor gear bag or I don't know. All kind of different stuff, you know. This multi-purpose gear bag it can compress with the compressor straps like regular or you can roll down like I just did alright well for lack of time this is the spot, this juniper, this juniper here, going between them, calling it good. Got to do a quick setup. All right, now we just take our, take the pack off here, the compressor bag. This one's a multi-purpose gear bag. Yeah, nothing, nothing I got here is sensitive. So, Dinner, poncho, ghostly cloak, with my little uh, adapter things, my hammock keys that I've been testing. Got a bunch of different kinds on here I've been working with and uh, really liking them. Alright, so I got my loop through here. The eye in this Dyneema cord, very simple cord, just Dyneema with an eye in it. Put that through there. Let me just start cinching it down here. It's like that. Got a gathered in hammock now. All right, so here's the this the hammock key. This is my newest version right here. So you see, it's got a it's got a little hook on it. And it's got a, an, a, a hole there and then it's got a key on the end that allows you to, it's like, uh, it's like when you tie up a boat to a, to a dock, you know, and you got a cleat on the dock and you put a, put a half he hitch on each side of the cleat. Well, that's what you're doing right there. And I found, I started out, I thought I needed a cleat on both sides, but just a cleat on one side does a trick. And I just hooked my cord going out to my hammock right there and that's all I need right there I'm good to go if I need to adjust it or anything like that why you know I can just pull on that it undoes my my half hitch and then if I grab this thing and I squeeze the cord between the key the tip of the key right there and the cord and I pull on it and I can feed from the hammock why what that'll do is that takes up some slack and then I just uh, flip a half hitch around there like that give it a little pull and I've now tightened up my hammock just as simple as that if I was going to use a tree strap I can do the same thing only I'd put this thing through the ends of the tree strap instead of around the tree Oh yeah, this is nice right here. It's a beautiful deal, man. And you know what? This is uh, this one of our super ultralight ponchos right here, set up as a hammock. I mean, this thing only weighs about uh, 14 ounces or something like that. So, very light. It's a hammock. It's a tarp. It's a it's a poncho. I can set up as a chair in a couple of different ways, Yukon chair and stuff like that. And it's very simple. So anyway, you know, the sun's going down here. It's going to be dark pretty soon. <laughs> but 
in light of a, a couple vehicle mishaps today. <laughs> It's crazy. My life is nuts right now. I don't know what the heck's going on, but you know, I'm trying to show you. You know, you just be adaptable. I didn't. I, I didn't get to do all the stuff I wanted to do and the way I wanted to do it today. I wanted to throw up the ultralight tarp over here. A couple different pieces of gear. I'm good to go. I I got this Dyneema cording, which holds my hammock up, um, or I can use it to string up a, a tarp or something like that. You know. So, you know, I'm doing the best I can. You know, I'm adapting. You know, with a, just a few pieces of gear, think about it, think about it. I'm good to go because I got my little tarp kit, takes up almost no space, it's, you know. It's a diameter of a magic marker for crying out loud, you know, I mean, I mean, why not take it, right? So, if you're checking out my channel, I'm going to start up here, uh, uh, my Perry Peacock channel, and uh, just stuff about my life, a uh, vlog, and, uh, you know, I tell all different kind of stuff, stories about my life haywire stuff, whatever, funny stuff, stories, you know, stuff about my history growing up, different things like that. It, it, this kind of gear just makes possible traveling light and still being very flexible, you know. I always want to be able to shelter up. This kind of gear just makes possible traveling light and still being very flexible, you know. I always want to be able to shelter up. Be ready for whatever, and that's what I like about our gear. You know, wherever I got to go, whatever I got to do, if I have some pieces of our gear with me, um, you know, I can make do. Like an Osni cloak or something like that can be a blanket and all that sort of thing. I can wear it as a cloak. I can wear it underneath a poncho. It can snap into the poncho to become an integral part of it. You know, here I got my hammock, you know, which, which is made out of my poncho. And it's super ultra light, but it's still strong enough for me. You know, these things right here are good probably up, you know, up to around 250 pounds as used as a hammock. So, I mean, you know, it's darn good stuff, you know. Here, I'm, I'm going to be sheltering with just what I got. I'm going to be sheltering. I'm going to be in pretty good shape. Now, he's a lightweight, not just for, not just for backpacking, ultralight, you know, through hiking, stuff like that, but, but lightweight for going on a bike or a motorcycle or something like that. So it's light. It's very compact. Not taking up much much room or anything like that, so the lightweight comes into play in a lot more situations than just, you know, say, hey, I'm gonna go do a 50-mile hike or you know, backpack or whatever.